What do coaches look for at the high school, NCAA, and pro level? The pro level, they look for talent. They look for players who have tremendous ability. And it starts there and it ends there for a lot of coaches. Um, at the professional level, it's hard to out-coach another coach because most of the coaches that work at that level are, are great at what they do. So you've got to have tremendous talent. And then what? You, I think at the pro level, you have to be, and this is where I think people get lost, the word pro means it's short for proficient, professional, a professional. That means they've mastered their craft. You call in a, a master electrician. He's probably not going to blow up your house. He's not going to wire the, the two wires that are going to cause a fire. He knows what he's doing. So when you are at the pro level, you don't shouldn't have to be told how to set a screen. You shouldn't have to you know, stand there and, and, and be told, this is what you do when your man has the ball. These are things you're supposed to know. And you're supposed to be able to make open shots. And anybody who can't make open shots shouldn't be allowed to play in the pros because people come to watch you because you're a professional. And they look at you and they go, well, that guy misses more shots than he makes. I can do that. Simple things like that. And at the college level... You know, you're looking for kids that fit into your program, have the kind of characteristics that you like as a coach and are unselfish, speaking personally, are unselfish and want to buy in and play with other great players, don't necessarily have to be the star of the show all the time, can be great when they have to be great, can be um, a role player when they have to be a role player. They can be whatever the coach needs them to be, whatever the team needs them to be. And at the high school level, you just don't look for kids that want to get better. You know, you, 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 sometimes you're just stuck with the kids that walk in the door, you know. So you sit there and you're going, boy, you know, I got 25, 35, 40 kids trying out for a team and I can only take 12. Which 12 I want to take? It still goes back to you have to have some basketball talent. But then it's like, is this kid a good kid? Is this kid a good student? Is this kid going to be able to stay in school or are they going to flunk out? Do I have to be on this kid because they're always in trouble? You know, and... Kids that are willing to sacrifice, they view it as a learning experience. You know, like, I, I think I can learn a lot from my coach and that'll help me, you know, if I want to play in college or even if I don't want to play in college, it'll, it'll, it'll help me. And the, the thing that's consistent among all three is people that love the game, people that love to play, they love to practice, they love to be in the gym, they love watching the game on TV, they love going to games, they love reading about the game. Coaches love those kind of players. Because there's no substitute for someone who lives the game. You know, I use that example with my players whenever I can. You know, like you think a guy that uh, is, is a great guitarist, you think he's, he spends 10 hours a day doing something other than playing the guitar? No. And when he reads a book, what's he read? Probably reads a book about guitars. And he goes to as many shows as he can and I bet you he listens to as many things as he can to help him be a better guitar player and he follows who the great guitarists are and I bet you he knows the names of every great guitar ever made that's what that's what kind of players coaches love those that just throw themselves into the game and have a passion for the game um, it's rare but if you find those guys then it goes back to your first question then you have a chance to be a great coach